Welcome back to another episode of Nate and Tech. Today I'm going to be doing a two month review of my Google Pixel Book, which I bought back at the beginning of November. I'm going to be going over a lot of the things that I've experienced with it, um, things I've noticed, things, good things, bad things, mostly good. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, first thing I wanted to cover and kind of go over again, the screen. Uh, the screen on this is my favorite screen right now to, to work on. Uh, the, res the, the size and the resolution fits my day-to-day -day, uh, working platform or whatever you wanted to call it. Um, I do a lot of my, my writing on this. I do a lot of reading on it, reading of books. Um, I wrote it remote into other computers on it. So I pretty much do a lot of my, anything where I'm not sitting on my, basically my gaming machine or my main work computer, I do on this. Uh, the resolution is great. It's almost more clear than my than my monitors that I have at work. So very impressed and I love the screen on this. Even though I'm not even running at a full resolution, it's still beautiful, crystal clear. Uh, the keyboard. After having this for two months, I actually find myself wanting to use and wanting to type on this more than I do most of the other keyboards that I have. I have a, a Logitech Wave uh, keyboard at work. I think it's a 520 model. Um, it's okay. I've got my Logitech G910 upstairs, which I would probably be my favorite keyboard. This would be my second. Um, I love typing on this. The keys have a really good feedback. They're spaced just right, at least for me. Uh, I, I really enjoy typing on this. I don't have a lot of missed keys um, and it doesn't feel like a, a laptop keyboard to me. It, it, it feels like a, a normal keyboard. Uh, the sound on this is decent. I've been able to hear anything that I, that I wanted on it. Um, I don't watch too many movies and music on it usually, but when I do, the sound is still pretty, pretty dang clear. Um, like I said, on this, as thin as this is, we're not going to get a lot of bass out of this just because of the, the, the form factor that it is, but the sound in general sounds really good. Uh, the touchpad on this is probably one of my favorite parts of this. Uh, the touchpad on this is so smooth. Uh, you pretty much almost have to go and experience it, but think of it as using your phone's touchscreen or the glass on your phone for your touchpad. Uh, I find myself not even using the touchscreen on this very often because the touchpad is so nice to use that I end up just using it uh, most of the time. Uh, the form factor, one of the main reasons why I bought this, I love the the you know 10 millimeter yeah 10.4 millimeters thick, the two pounds, the size, the footprint that this is. Um, I actually had a chance to take this to the coast with me over Christmas and it was perfect. Um, I was able to sit down and use it in pretty much any location I was at. Uh, it was very light to carry around even when I've, I've got my bag on me with all my stuff in it. It's just, it's light enough to where it's still nice to carry. It doesn't feel like it's a burden to carry my laptop around with me everywhere. Um, I also have noticed, or for lack of noticing, even after the two months of using this, opening and closing it and hauling it around everywhere, I noticed even when I pick it up, it still feels nice and firm. Uh, we've got some laptops at work and stuff that over the years that they've been used, you pick them up and you can feel them kind of tweak and twist and you can hear the components or the, you know, the, the back covers or whatnot. You can hear them creak and whatnot. I haven't noticed any of that with this. Um, it's still nice and solid just like it was the day that I bought it. You know, I generally will pick it up from a corner um, when I grab it off somewhere and it's solid. I love it. Hinges, hinges are still nice and smooth. I haven't noticed any degradation, any change in those in the last two months. And like I said, I, I open and close this. Whenever I'm not using it, it gets closed so that it goes to sleep and doesn't uh, wear on my battery. So it gets opened five to 10 times a day minimum and hinges are still great. The wrist pads, um, I wanna to talk to these, talk about these a little bit. They are still nice and smooth. I haven't noticed any degradation in them. 
um, divots, anything like that. I have noticed just a little bit of color, um, color change in them. Now, I, I will let you know, I haven't cleaned these at all in the last two months. So I'm gonna try to get a better view. And I don't know if it's gonna show up in the camera or not. But there is just a little bit, and there might be some on this back. Let's see if I can get it here. This may or may not, I can't tell from the, the screen on my camera if it's picking it up or not. So we'll see in post if it shows up. They have gotten just, just a hair darker, kind of an off-white, uh, but not much. So actually what I'm gonna do before I finish this video is I'm gonna go through and clean them with some of the wipes and stuff we have at work and see if they, they come back to white or not. Like I said, it's, it's barely noticeable. Um, I wanted to make a note of it when I made this video, so I've, I've kind of watched them over the last couple months to see. I'm kind of surprised they're not dirtier than they are uh, for as much as I use and type on this. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of impressed that they're not as dirty, but with being white, I expected them to change color. I mean, they're not gonna stay white. It's, it's just the way white is. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean these tomorrow and kind of let you guys know what what we find out on, on how they how they come out if the color actually goes back or not uh, the google assistant on this i haven't used very much um, it does you know it does pick up my voice when i when i do use it i've tried the pen a few times with a few different things it's kind of been hit or miss uh, but it is something google it's 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 a new thing from google so i know they're going to be working on it uh, so it should be getting better over time and this is one of their software things this, it's not hardware related it's just something that will get better as they come out with more updates. So I'll keep you guys updated with that. If I notice anything big and change or whatever, I will you know, maybe release a mini video and, and update um, a new software, things that, we, that, that come up. The battery on this, still amazing. Um, there's been a couple times where I've used it pretty heavy and I've only got you know four to six hours of battery out of it. But generally, um, for example, right now, if you can see on the screen here, Battery is almost, almost gone. Um, see if I can actually get a percentage on. I'm down to 23%. I haven't charged this since last night and it's been on my desk three quarters of the day and I've even used it tonight after work. So to give you that's an idea of how long the battery on this lasts. Generally I get a good eight to 10 hours minimum. Um, out of it so the battery for me and most of the stuff i'm doing is just web web browsing you know google drive copying some files back and forth editing uh some of the things for for the channel and whatnot so that's what i do with it i'm pretty sure if i was doing video editing and whatnot that battery life would go down considerably but most of the stuff i use it for i'm getting i mean a, a day at work a good eight hours of work on it easily so battery on this is still great even after two months i haven't noticed any change in it uh, the charging a couple things i tested with this uh, the usb charging which is see charging which is really nice i was at work um, once and i forgot my charger and the battery i hadn't charged it all night so the battery was down to probably under 50 percent after using it for a couple hours i got down to where the battery was you know i needed to plug it in didn't have my quick charger. The only thing I had on me was one of the little, you know, one, two amp phone charger um, chargers. So I was like, well, I'll give it a try. Plugged it in with a USB-C cable that I had in my bag and it started charging, but I did get a notification that says that this is on. It may keep it alive, but it's not gonna actually charge it up. So I said, well, let's see how long it takes to, to charge when I'm using one of the, the tiny, tiny chargers. And, um, I probably gave it a good three or four hours on the charger with the screen closed so the laptop was off. And it actually made it up to a good 50, 60% just on that little charger. So the advantage of this USB-C charging on this over other laptops is you can charge it with just about any wall charger you can you come across. Granted, it's gonna take longer with one versus others, but you, that option is there. You're not gonna be stuck completely without a laptop. If you've got some time to kill, you can wait a couple hours, you'll get your percentage up at least to use it for a couple hours. So one nice thing that I found, and I, I, 
it's a little bonus, but it's, it's nice to know that it's there and I've got some flexibility on the charging. Well, let's see. Now the software we're gonna get into a little bit. Um, Chrome OS, as if you've ever worked in it, you know that it's still very limited. I haven't had a, I haven't had any good luck with the video editing software on this. I think mainly because the cameras that I use, which are the Canon Vixias, I record at 1080p 60 frames a second, and I think the color palette palette on those or something is weird because when I try to edit the videos, I get it's like I'm not getting a full color palette or something. The the color is is very weird on them. So I can't edit, I'd even tried rendering them just to see if maybe it was just the, the, you know, the pre-editing that I was working on and they still came out weird. So I thought about recording a video on my phone and using it and, and seeing if I get anything different. But from the cameras that I use for recording, the video editing software that, that they have, for some reason it doesn't work. So I haven't really dived into the video editing side of stuff. I have done some photo editing and I've had good luck with that. Um, not as full powerful as Photoshop and whatnot, but for your basic, you know, brightness, contrast, uh, you know, some different uh, color styles, you want to put some text and stuff on there, uh, it's really nice. And the screen with the, how crisp and clean the screen is, it's actually a, it's really nice to work on. Uh, let's see, most of my stuff that I use is in the Google ecosystem. I use Google Drive a lot, I, you know, Google Docs, Google Sheets, whatnot. So this, for my day-to-day -day use, it, it fits with what I use. Um, if I was, you know, most of the stuff I was using was Word or Excel or whatnot, I might be having to, you know, tweak stuff a little bit. It may not be as convenient for me, um, but those those do show up or they are available on the Pixel or the Pixel Book. But you have to have an Office 365 um, account to use those on the Pixel Book. So eh, it's a paid subscription, basically. Uh, not something I'm really interested in, but I did install them and then found out I had that, so I got rid of them. Um, I've come across a bunch of apps that, that don't work. For example, my uh, Yee Home video camera app crashes as soon as I try to load it on here. So I'm waiting for them to see if they actually come out with an app that works for this. Uh, I haven't had any issues with games. The couple of games that I've installed have worked. Most of it's just, you know, a random app that doesn't work. It doesn't look right. You can't maximize it or you do maximize it and it crashes, but it works in the normal windowed mode. So things on the Google OS or the Chrome OS, they're still new. You're going to find a lot of apps that either haven't been written for the Chrome OS or adjusted to the Chrome OS to work with the full screen mode. And a lot of that, like I said, we, we talked, this is, this is all app stuff. It has nothing to do with the hardware of the device. Um, we're going to come across that in pretty much any new OS or, you know, Linux has that problem too. And there's a lot of app support for that. At least there wasn't when it was new and getting popular, at least at the, on the consumer level. So things have to grow. And, and I knew that going into this, I've had a couple Chrome devices um, and I knew that going in that the software on this, as far as third party software is still gonna be growing. And that's one of the reasons I think Google built this is to push that envelope and get people to start building more and more apps for their Chrome OS. Um, one of the other issues that I came across was the network support on this. So I've got, four servers or three servers on my gaming machine that I have files stored on and trying to copy those files to this is, I won't say a headache, but it, it, it's a pain. Um, you can, you can connect to shared drives with it, but I've noticed the transfer speeds are really slow. Uh, I am using a, a 5g network here, so I shouldn't be getting as slow speeds as I'm, as I'm getting. Um, I think a lot of it's just protocol based on this. And I'll notice sometimes it'll copy one or two files and then it'll hang. And I can't connect to that network drive again until I completely restart the, the Pixel Book. Again, it's a software issue. I've tried a couple other apps like Astro and whatnot, and I kind of pretty much had the same, same experience with those, either slow network speeds um, or, you know, it, it hangs. I think it's just something with, you know, this connecting to a Windows machine to copy files or whatnot. It just hasn't been fine-tuned or, or polished. So 
I'm hoping they fix that sometime soon because I do like to copy files back and forth out wireless without using a thumb drive or whatnot, but you know, there's workarounds. Uh, let's see. One of the things, and this doesn't have to do with the Pixel Book, but I didn't find it out until I got the Pixel Book and it's actually made it really nice, is that you can actually have multiple accounts. You can log into multiple accounts at once. Um, see if I can show you this. So this is my, my personal account. This is the, um, the document that I'm, you know, I'm reading off of for my notes and stuff for, the, for this video. If I hit Control Alt, Control Alt, and either the greater than sign or the less than sign, now we're looking at my, uh, my Nate and Tech Gmail account. So this gives you know, my YouTube stuff and whatnot. So I can actually have, and then you can switch between, you know, hold control out and the, just hit the key. It literally jumps between the two accounts. Um, it's actually made it really nice for me to work on because I can keep all of my personal stuff in one account and I can keep all of my YouTube channel, Nate and Tech stuff in another account and I can literally switch between them with three keystrokes. Um, when I'm editing videos, editing documents or whatnot, you know, I can just switch between them. If I want to look at something on the website, you know, how many subscribers are had, which actually I wanted to thank everybody. I've got a hundred subscribers over the new year weekend. So um, awesome milestone for that. Thank you very much. And um, that's probably one of, you know, my, one of my other favorite features of the Chrome OS is that I can, you know, the multitasking part of it has some advantages over Windows, like Windows to switch accounts, not as easy. Um, with this, I can switch between my two accounts and get into everything I need to. And they do actually have separate apps. So the apps that show up on one account don't show up on the other. So you actually have, it's, you know, you actually have to install what apps you want on that one. And then remember, so if I wipe this and I log back into it, all of my apps basically reinstall. Um, it's actually kind of a nice, you know, the OS has definitely got some advantages and it's got its disadvantages as well. Um, it's pretty much the only stuff I wanted to cover on this. Like I said, I use this every day. I don't think there's been a very few days in the last two months that I actually haven't opened this up and done something on it. Um, I take it with me in my car pretty much anytime. I even go, you know, just into town with the kids. It, it goes in my bag and I take it with me because I never know if I'm going to need to look something up or I'm going to have five or 10 minutes to work on a document for the channel or whatnot. So it's actually advice that I'm, I'm still two months later, still finding that I prefer to work on this over a lot of my other devices. Um, so, you know, this is my personal experience. Take of it what you will, but I love it. I don't know if like I said, it's worth a thousand dollars for everybody. It is for me and it fits exactly what, what I want. The last thing I, I got two more things I wanted to cover. I did pick up the pixel book pen. Um, I got it. I got a couple discounts and stuff at, well, more like e-gift cards and stuff that I got at Best Buy. So I went ahead and picked it up. I got it on a, you know, $30, $40 off on it. So I said, what the heck, I'll pick it up. And it's actually really nice. I, have, I don't use it too much. I mean, it's more of an artistic thing. I'm not a big on artist type thing, but I'll sit down and uh, believe it or not, I'm, I will sit down and color with my five-year-old. And instead of coloring on paper, I'll actually sit down and I'll pick up a, you know, just a black and white. Um, like late recently, I've actually been working on a Pinkie Pie picture. Uh, my daughter and me a little bit are into My Little Pony. So um, anyway, she'll be coloring on her paper stuff with colored pencils or markers or whatever. And I'll sit and I'll color on mine just to spend some time with her or whatnot. So it's been really nice and enjoyable. And you know, you can get, you know, the angular awareness on this, which I believe was 60 degrees of, of angular awareness. So it knows, just like if you're a colored pencil, you can either get a fine tip if you're using it straight up and down, or you can get um, like a, you know, the side of the, uh, like the side of the pencil or whatnot, where you want a wider uh, swath on it. It's got all that. Plus it's also got the 2000 or more uh, degrees of sensitivity. So the harder you push on it, it, it makes either the, the mark on the page darker or sometimes a little bit wider and thicker. Um, and then of course the pen, if you want to circle something on there, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen this, let's go ahead and 
I'll show you. Let me zoom in here. So let's go to a website. Well, we'll just bring this up. So if I search, so and it will bring up information here, you know, which it brought up Google, you know, technology company, which I hope it will be able to recognize its own logo. <laughs> but, you know, it, it brings up, you know, whatever you want here. Let's see if I can pick up go to my Best Buy and let's do let's just see what we've got for deal of the day let's see if it picks these up so it actually did pick up uh, the Netgear I can't tell if that's the correct part number it looks I mean it, it actually did pick up the item so you know, maybe they're getting better with it. So it, it's hit or miss. You know, I've had probably about a 50-50 that it picked it up and, you know, whatnot. So, but it's nice to use. I mean, if you're using it in tablet mode, it's nice just to click on stuff instead of having to use your finger. Sometimes I'll just break this out and just use it for that. Um, one of my buddies, he's an artist. He actually lives next door to me. He does a lot of uh, digital graphic stuff. He's actually got one of the, the pads and actual pad that he uses on his computer he actually drew something he I had him come over and say, hey come over and see what this pen's like um and this is just something he sketched up so don't judge him on you know <laughs> just what this is but this was just a five ten minute sketch that he that he did so this is my pinkie pie that i've been slowly coloring let's see let's get out of this back to the gallery he says he's going to come over and bring me another one, but he hasn't had time or, or make me another one. But, you know, he just sketched this up in, in a few minutes. And I'll put a screenshot of this up or maybe a new one that he drew. But he got in, let's see, a couple spots right here. I mean, you can really see the little light brush strokes right here. All sorts of different, you know, coloring styles and whatnot. He said this was about 10 minutes, maybe less, that he just sat down and was like, I'm just going to color this. And this program I was the Autodesk program. You know, it's got all sorts of... This is probably one of the best artistic ones. Um, it doesn't give like a fill. You know, if you just want to fill something in, you actually have to color it. So this is one I've been using with my, my Pinkie Pie um, page that I've been coloring. Yeah, it's just for fun, so I'm spending some time with my daughter. But um, responsiveness is actually really good. It depends on the program. Some are better than others. The Autodesk one has really good response. Um, I've even had decent response when I've been writing in um, Google Keep. Let's see, you know, let's change that color. <laughs> Probably can't see that very well. You know, it's it's really responsive. There's not not a lot of delay on this at all. So, as far as the pen goes, I mean, if you're going to use it, it's it's definitely worth it. I mean, if you're not going to use it, I mean, don't definitely don't spend the hundred dollars on it if you're not going to use it. But I kind of got it mainly for a review. But I have used it quite a few times. You know, if I'm bored and I just want to sit down and you know draw or color or write some notes down or whatever, it's it's been nice to have. And Google has finally released um, replacement tips for these. I think it was three or four of them, plus a, a little tool to pull them, some tweezers to pull them out. I think it was about 15 bucks um, on their website. So those are all available now. Uh, let's see. The last thing, um, and there's a lot of different, a lot of different things out for USB-C. I picked up just a little dock. So I could plug in, it's got an HDMI port, two USB 3 ports, um, and a couple of memory stick, or, or sorry, SD card and a micro SD card slot on it. Just so, you know, if I wanted to travel and I could 
watch movies, plug it into HDMI. I could I could plug it in a thumb drive if I need to, or even, you know, I haven't had any issues with this. I tried using a HDMI to micro or not micros uh, display ported cable, and it didn't work for me for some reason. It could be the cable doesn't go that direction. It was supposed to be HDMI to or display port to HDMI, and I was trying to go the other direction. It didn't like it. Um, but I have used HDMI cables and they work perfectly. It actually shows up as a second screen, picks up the resolution, it's almost instant. Um, the Chrome OS has definitely got a really good support for USB devices in general. Uh, a lot of the drivers are, are built in, they're already there, you just plug it in and go. Um, so big advantage for for the Chrome OS for that kind of stuff over Microsoft. I don't do hardly any work in Mac or Linux, so I, I can't say how that compares, but I do know over Windows, there's there's better driver support built in in the Chrome OS that I found than, than the Windows OS. So um, carry that around with me just as, just because. So, and the pen on this, it's actually, I was really surprised how light this pen is. I was expecting it to weigh probably twice as much as it does. I mean, it feels like a really, really super light plastic is really what it feels like. I mean, it's good quality, but it's, I mean, it doesn't feel much heavier than a, I don't even know what really to call it. Maybe two pencils as, as far as the, the heaviness on it. Um, it does take a quad, quad A battery. And this, I mean, this is aluminum, it's not plastic, but just one, one little quad A battery. Like I said, really, really good quality on this. Um, yeah, so that's my two month review. Uh, it's been working exactly as I expected it to when I bought it, and it's exceeded my expectations in a lot of ways. And I'm still waiting for some of the software stuff to catch up because it's new. I did hear uh, that Google's new Fuchsia OS is available for this. I looked at the instructions and it's a little more than what I want to get into, especially with my personal day-to-day -day device. But if they do come out with like an OTA or an option where I can maybe dual boot or whatnot uh, with a better and easier install, I might take a look at it and review it for you guys. So if that ever comes up, definitely keep an eye out for that video. And we'll see you next time.